Hi there, I'm Matt Godbolt and I'm going to talk about my little embeddable C++ WebSocket server called CSOX. So first of all, why? Why did I write a web server in C++? There are plenty of them out there. But at the time that I wrote it, about six years ago, there were no web servers that supported WebSockets. At work, we use lots and lots of C++ applications running on remote servers, and it seemed like the best way to control and command them and to investigate what's going on with them and get introspection into what they're doing is to run a web server. The web is a ubiquitous UI, and having simple access to the internal state of our applications by the application itself, serving up web pages, and more critically, serving web sockets, which allowed two-way communication between the browser and the remote server, was really convenient. So I knocked up something in C++ and linked it into the application, and off we went, and we've never really looked back. CSOX is designed to be pretty lightweight and unobtrusive. Here's how, for example, you would start serving a website um, served from a directory called web on port 9000. You literally configure the server with a logger. In this case, I'm just using printf to log. And then you say, hey, serve the web pages at web. That means you could hit localhost port 9000 in your web browser and you'd see whatever index.html and all the other files that were living in web. That's great, but that's a static page. How do I deal with interactivity? Enter WebSockets. Once we have a website up and running, we can add JavaScript and serve that up from the index HTML and have that connect back to the server and request a WebSocket connection. We then have a two-way communication between the client and the server where we can send and receive arbitrary data. This line of code adds a WebSocket handler at slash chat and uh, we pass a shared object uh, to the handler that we'll show you on the next slide. In retrospect, the design of this is not great. Um, I don't think shared pointers are the right choice here, but it certainly was a convenient and easy go-to at this point. So don't take any tips on design from me just yet and prefer unique pointers in general, but shared pointers here are what I'm stuck with. I'm almost certainly gonna have to change the API now I'm doing this presentation. What does the handler look like then? It implements the WebSocket colon colon handler interface and we have on connect, on disconnect, and on data, which do pretty much the obvious things. In this implementation, uh, which is a very, very simple chat client, we just keep track of all the connections that have come in in an unordered set of WebSocket stars, which we don't own. We note on connections that there is a new connection, so we put that into our set. And then we say, hey, this particular person has joined. Here we ask the connection for its credentials and the username of those credentials, and we use that as the uh, name of the client. There's no login or anything like that. Similarly, on, on disconnect, we just remove the disconnecting WebSocket from our list of WebSockets and say that they've left. And then on any other piece of data, we send the username and the piece of data that they sent to everybody, including the WebSocket that actually sent the data in the first place. So we echo it back. And then the only non-virtual method on this whole um, object is this send method at the bottom there, which just literally iterates over all the possible connections and sends that particular message to everybody. So it just broadcasts out to all connected web sockets. Let me show you a demo of that. So here I've just checked out the code into a new directory. There we're just at GitHub's uh, CSOX directory and nothing here is new and uh, I'm going to kill the build that I did earlier before I tested it and we're going to make a whole new build directory. So this is a clean build directory inside the repository. Um, as you can see there's just the, um, the default bits and pieces here. Um, CSOX is a CMake project, so we're going to go into build and then I'm going to run CMake. And as you can see, Fish is auto completing what I'm meant to type here. And I'm just going to say build the release with debug info and I'm going to choose to use Ninja as my build tool. So I'll let that do its thing. There. And now we're going to run Ninja to build um, CSOX and all of the applications. So this will take a little while on my laptop. I will zoom this through the magic of uh, video technology. And we're built. So now we have a bunch of stuff built inside the source directory um, of the build, but due to some CMake um, things on my part, I need to be in the main area of CSOC. So I'm gonna run code from here. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the kind of things that we've got here. So I'm gonna look at this chat room example, which is the same thing we showed a minute ago in the slides and load of boring copyright stuff. Let's, let's review that in VI and 
yeah so here we are this is the the handler we saw in the code before it's pretty much identical um, so there's nothing particularly interesting there um, except I've used apparently I've used a set here rather than an unordered set um, I in this instance decided to implement my own authentication handler um, when this means that when someone logs in or rather when a connection comes in I am going to add their connect credentials uh, a us username which is just the uh, address that they've come from um, there's no SSO or anything clever like that going on here I'm just literally taking the request remote address and using that as their username and then the way that the page handlers work is they cascade one to the other so this is effectively just like a filter on all page requests and it annotates all connections with a username in this way and then down here is the really simple main where we have a server we add a page handler and this page handler is the the thing that's going to annotate the connections with an authentication of their name as above we're going to end uh, add an endpoint called slash chat which has the handler and then we're going to serve from the surus ws chat suit there ws chat room web directory on port 9000 so i am oops i'm going to run that so that's in build surus app ws chat room and we're on and running and by default the printf logger goes to standard out obviously and it will print out where it's listening so i have the my laptop's address here and we're going to click on it and we have the world's most boring chat room i'm actually going to open two copies of this because there's nothing sadder than not talking to somebody else as you can see in the background there the um the logger is pretty chatty that's why it's configurable and here we go we have uh, the world's worst chat room we can say hello in this one and you can see it appeared in both straight away and you know worst chat ever so back to irc for me we should talk briefly about threading so the earlier pieces of code where the server just went server.serve that would have blocked forever until some other thread calls stop on that uh, connection so we normally need to um have multiple threads going and we'll have the main server on its own thread it's common that you want to do something every say one second this is a terrible way of implementing that but this is nonetheless a way of doing it where we're just going to make a thread that goes on forever we detach from it and every second it calls my handler tick there's a problem with this though my handler tick is a handler that is running on a different thread from our own how do we deal with this CSOX has a very simple way of just executing an arbitrary piece of code on the serving thread. So here in the my handler tick, we're thunking over to the thread that the CSOX server is running on to send, a, uh, in this instance, just to send the text tick. So if I were to run this piece of code in my chat client, I'd see the word tick come up once a second. And of course, this is the kind of thing that you can use to periodically send statistics and information about the server or the um, the process that you're looking at over a WebSocket connection and then you can visualize it however you like using JavaScript and HTML and all those good things. Of course, it's not all about the dynamic content of um, WebSocket connections. It's useful to be able to build up pages just like any other web server. So CSOX has some simple page handling where you can derive from a page handler and you can handle requests for a particular resource or asset and you can do things you know handling gets and puts and posts and stuff uh, it's pretty basic but you can build something more sophisticated out of some utility classes that are provided cracked URIs and root page handler here the authentication method the credential stuff that we saw in the chat client earlier that's pluggable and uh, as you saw in the example the um, it, it's pretty simple to add your own um, authentication handler for example at, uh, at work we use something which plugs into our single sign-on so that we can make sure that the only the right people can see the the uh, the pages that um, they're entitled to so in conclusion web command and control in C++ is easy you can use the CSOX library here with this github URL and you can be up and running pretty quickly it's worth noting that there are other libraries out there that are probably uh, more general and provide more facilities. For example, in Boost, there's the Beast library that's coming down and will be available very soon. I definitely recommend you check that out. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, both technical and uh, dives into libraries, then please do subscribe.